Hey, so I finally watched Helsing, the original anime. And this is something I've only been wanting to watch for about 20 years or so. I don't know why it took me so long. But I can remember back then in the early 2000s when it came out, it was actually very popular and it's a bit of a classic today. It was very, very highly recommended. It was really a must watch anime back in the day. And it makes me a little uh, surprised to find out now that there's some real mixed opinions of it. Now we have Helsing Ultimate, which I have yet to watch, but I hear that it is much, much better, and everybody likes to just crap on the original Helsing now. I don't know, I really enjoyed it. I don't know why I didn't watch it sooner. I can tell you why I didn't watch it 20 years ago, and that is because anime was so much less accessible back then. In the early 2000s, as compared to today, we didn't have streaming services, there was no Crunchyroll, there was no Netflix. You pretty much saw whatever was on Toonami, and if you wanted to watch something else, you'd have to go buy the DVDs. And the DVDs were so expensive. You could spend 30 or 40 dollars on one DVD that had like four episodes on it. To get a whole season of an anime could cost 100 to 200 dollars or even more. It was ridiculous. So most of us just watched whatever was on Cartoon Network. Sure, there were some ways to watch things online. You could download an episode from some shady site or BitTorrent, but that could take hours and hours or days if you had slow internet. So things have come a long way. And yeah, for some reason, I didn't get to watch it then. It's always been in the back of my mind though. Like, oh, I gotta watch Helsing sometime. So the other day I was browsing Crunchyroll. I was in the mood to watch some anime and I gotta lower this light. This is blinding me. I don't know how people use these ring lights. I'm going blind already. So, it was almost Halloween time. I'm like, I'm gonna watch something dark and kind of spooky for Halloween. Vampires, Helsing, let's go, it's about time. So if you don't know about Helsing, it is a vampire-based anime. That is the theme of it. It centers around Alucard, who is this vampire, and really this police girl who he saves from death, but he also turns her into a vampire in order to save her. She made the choice as well. He takes her into this group called Helsing, which is a secret organization that hunts down vampires. Why is Alucard a vampire working for an organization who takes down other vampires? I'm not gonna spoil it. In fact, I, I feel like that wasn't answered very well. It wasn't answered adequately in this series. I have a feeling that's gonna be better explained in Ultimate, but we'll come back to that. Anyways, we're following our, our protagonists as they hunt down other vampires who are attacking England. There's all these other secret organizations going on, like the Vatican has their group of vampire killers and some really interesting stuff. I gotta say the just the visuals of this anime are very striking and yeah it's a little dated, it's 20 years old, but there's some very cool cinematography, there's some very cool art in here. Ever since, you know, the first episode when Alucard is finally on the screen, oh man, it just looks so awesome. The way they made those scenes, it, all you see is like the red sky in the background, it's so dark. You see Alucard standing there in his red coat, just his silhouette and red highlights of his figure. It, it's just so stunning, these shots. It's a heavy use of shadows, lots of blacks and reds, and it just looks very, very cool. There's some very cool action in this series as well, lots of gunplay. Alucard has all kinds of cool vampire powers that you see more and more of throughout the show. He can kind of shapeshift, he can summon like a hellhound, and very cool stuff. Lots of exciting action, and just an interesting story, interesting characters. You're watching this police girl who is a new vampire and she's kind of trying to come to terms with that. and and adjust to that without, I guess, feeling like a monster, like she's hesitant to drink human blood. She drinks them out of donation bags, like IV bags. She doesn't attack people, of course, but as a vampire she needs to consume this blood to live and to be strong, and it's like, it takes her some days before she will do it and she's getting weaker and weaker. She ultimately embraces her new vampire nature and, and uses it for good, of course, but there's a lot of different dynamics. She's trying to get used to working in this strange organization and being this undead new type of being, utilizing her newfound strengths and just, there's a lot of tough situations involved. Seeing her colleagues get killed and turned into ghouls and things and then she has to kill them and they're like, I, 
She's like, I, I don't want to kill these people. They're they're my they're my brothers. They're my comrades. You know. Yeah, there's a lot of dark stuff in here. A lot of very dark subject matter, as you would expect in a vampire's tale, right? Lots of blood, lots of gore, lots of death, lots of very dark characters doing very, very bad things. I can say I read some of the manga back in the day. I had like the first three volumes, and I feel like the manga was darker. I feel like the manga was more gruesome in a lot of ways, which is to be expected, right? Anime is usually a little bit watered down from the original manga source material, but still very, very good. I love the animation, I love the characters, I love the story. It's not perfect, but it is a classic of the time it came out from. And going back to the manga, the manga was still running when this anime came out, so it took some different turns. We see that in a lot of anime adaptations, like, you know, Full Metal Alchemist, the anime came out while the manga was running, or before the manga finished, so it took some different turns. Then later on we got Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, who, uh, which followed the manga more closely because it had already finished at that point. That's what we get with Helsing Ultimate, which came out some years later. It has more modern animation and sticks more closely to the manga. Again, I haven't seen it yet, so I'll let you know when I do. But still, this is a classic of its time, and it's very well worth watching today. I always read the comments on Crunchyroll when I'm watching anime on Crunchyroll. I'll watch the episode, but before I go to the next one, I'm, I'm gonna scroll down and look at the comments just because I get a kick out of it. I saw a lot of negativity though, a lot of hate, and that was surprising because I was really enjoying myself the whole time. It's a short series, it's only 13 episodes, but people were saying it was slow. And I'm like, there's some really cool action in all of these episodes. I, I, I didn't think it was slow at all, but people were saying it was slow. You know, it's old, it's not that good looking anymore. And I will say that there were some dips in quality of the animation sometimes. But you know, it's, it's old, it's 20 years old, man. And I think it was really good for the time and it holds up very well today. I don't see what people are, are complaining about other than they're comparing it to Ultimate, which is I guess superior, but to me, like I say, I've wanted to watch this for 20 years. I was gonna watch this thing before I move on to Ultimate, and I'm glad I did. I feel like certain characters could have gotten more screen time. Some of the villains, like the final villain of the series, just wasn't that exciting. I didn't think he was that cool. I thought some of the other villains might have done better as a, you know, having a stronger role in it and being more of a main villain. I also feel like there were just unanswered questions. At the end, they kind of try and answer some things like who is Alucard really? And, you know, how did he come into be with Helsing? But I don't feel like they fully explained that, and that bothers me. I enjoyed the soundtrack. It had sort of a bluesy rock kind of vibe to it, sort of like a Western gunslinger show you, you would expect to have. As sometimes it would shake things up with more of like a hip hop beat or something a little jazzier. And I thought it was really cool. I, again, a product of its time. It's the era I grew up with. This is the stage when I was really getting into anime in my early teens. So for me, it's like a, it's like revisiting that era, right? And it's a little bit nostalgic. Even though I didn't really get to catch this anime back in the time, I, I might have been able to watch the first episode or something. But again, it wasn't easily accessible. I think I probably watched some anime music videos with Helsing. Do you guys remember AMVs back in the day? Oh man, good times. Good times. But uh, yeah, I just gotta say, I don't know why people are complaining. I'm really glad I watched it. I would definitely recommend checking it out. If you don't mind, you know, animation from that time period, and if you go into it knowing that there are going to be some differences from the manga, it's not Helsing Ultimate, but if you start with this and you like it, I, I'm excited to see Ultimate now because if it's so much better than the original Helsing, then man, I'm going to be in for a real treat. So <laughs> yeah, it's a classic of its time period, which may have been surpassed already, but still very worth watching. I found it very enjoyable. A lot of just really cool artwork, like I say, it's got so much style, it's got some cool action scenes, and great characters, and it's a classic, man, it's a classic. Definitely check it out, I watched it on Crunchyroll, like I said, and yeah, check it out guys, Helsing. But let me know what you think of Helsing, and if you have any other recommendations for me, 
anything you want to see on the channel. This is something new I'm trying out. So uh, thank you for watching today. I appreciate you and I will see you next time. Take care.